guys, Tom at DSC Sport here. This is our 2021 DSC Tuner Software Tutorial Video. The DSC controller is a plug and play product, meaning every new DSC controller comes already programmed for the vehicle it was ordered for. So no programming or tuning is needed. In this video, we will explain the function of each page in the DSC Tuner software. Once again, your new DSC controller comes already programmed and ready to plug and play into your car and to be enjoyed. More than 90% of the users love their DSCs right out of the box. However, if you want to learn about how your DSC works, this video will serve as a guide by explaining the DSC Tuner software. For users who wish to customize their DSC to their personal preference, we will highlight the most effective and popular settings to change in the DSC Tuner software, the quote-unquote go-to settings, so to speak. It takes years of education and real-life experience to become a suspension tuning expert, same as in many other professions. While it is not the purpose of this video to educate to an expert level, we do hope that by the end of this video, you have a general understanding of how the DSC Tuner software works. There are other resources available online or in books to learn about G-Force, vehicle weight transfer, and in-depth suspension tuning, which can help users dig deeper into tuning their DSC. Always save the original or previous calibration file before making any changes. This is because if a change is not in the positive direction, you can always go back to the previous. Any changes made using DSC Tuner software is at the user's own accord and accountability. DSC Tuner software and the DSC calibration files are defined as software, which are operating instructions within the architecture. The architecture is what we define as the firmware. Firmware for this product is not serviceable by the user. Please check out the support video section in the DSC Sport website, as well as our YouTube channel for other support videos. This video is relevant for DSC Tuner Software version 1.9.3 and for the DSC controllers this software version supports. With all of that out of the way, let's dive in by opening the DSC Tuner 1.9.3. We'll start by going over the menu on the upper left corner of the screen. File, Tools, Help. Under File, you have Open, this is what you want to use to open a file to view or to make changes to. Vehicle type, select the vehicle type that you're working with. We'll come back to the vehicle type with more details in just a little bit. Save and save as. This is what you want to use to save a file after you make changes to it or to rename the file to the changes that you have made or the date that you made these changes. Under Tools, we have Serial Settings. This is for setting COM ports. We have a whole other support video on this topic, so please refer to that video. Codes and Configuration. This is for checking fault codes and for checking the firmware version in your DSC. We also have a separate video on this. Next, we have Write All and Read All. These functions are for writing or reading the file from your DSC controller in its entirety. By that, I mean the entire file, all the different modes and all the different pages. Later on, I'll show you how to write an individual page. Reset board. This is an important function that we use quite a bit. Every time we connect to the DSC, we want to use the reset board function just to make sure that the DSC is connected and we're getting data back and forth. Reset board is also used to finalize a change that you have just made. 
think of the reset board function as a refresh button. Below reset board, we have config data log and record data log. We have separate video for this in the support video section of the DSC website. Last on the top menu is help. By opening the help dialog, it will display a general description of each page in the DSC tuner software. So every page you go to, you can always open up the help dialog to get an understanding of what this page does. Below the top menu are the performance tables. Starting from the left, we have G-Force, Brake, Excel, Speed, Steering, Shock Calibration, Velocity, and Settings. Right now, the tables are not populated because I didn't open the file. So I'm going to open up a file so that these cells will get populated. It will give a better understanding as I go on with my explanation. But before opening up a file, we want to go to vehicle type and select the vehicle. In this particular case, uh, let's select Porsche 9X1, just as an example. Now, using this as an example, there's a LNC extension at the end of this selection. LNC stands for launch control. Uh, this is not to be confused with the car's stock launch control. This is our DSC launch control function. We have a separate video on this function. Uh, please have a look at that when you get a chance. Now, by selecting the different vehicle, it will actually change the display. This is the GUI, the graphical user interface. By selecting the correct vehicle that you're working with, it will display the correct number of modes. And then some vehicle have different functions that other vehicles might not have. So it is important to select the vehicle first so that it displays the proper settings for your specific vehicle. Now that the vehicle is selected, we will open a file. For this example, we will use the Porsche 718 GT4 file that's just downloaded from the DSC website. With the file selected and open, it will automatically populate the entire table. With the file open and the table fully populated, there's a lot of stuff going on here. But don't worry, I'm going to simplify this for you. This big square we're looking at here is the G-Force table. Your car's accelerometer will measure the G-Force typically 500 times per second and send this information through the vehicle's network system. DSC commands the four shocks individually to the G-Force value, the direction of G-Force, and the rate of change in G-Force, all three in real time. By moving the cursor, you can see the command values change for individual shock. The harder you drive, the more G-Force is generated, the stiffer the suspension becomes. This is DSC Active Suspension Control. As you move this cursor to different parts of the G-Table, representative of straight line braking, accelerating, turning, trail braking, you will see the different command values to each shock over here in these four cells. One of the most common questions that we get is when a user first opens a file, the command values for the four shocks are uneven. This is because by programming default, whenever a new file is open, the G-Force cursor is all the way at the upper left corner. For this particular file, we have a 100% command to the outside. And the inside wheel is at 20%, which makes it softer for this particular file. So uh, not all files are going to be the same. So this is just how this particular one is. 
by moving the cursor to the middle, now the numbers are even. Typically, the G-Force table is not the parameter that you want to make changes to because regardless of what kind of card you have, G-Force to the card's behavior is universal. Below the main G table is the G comfort parameters. So think of this as a table within a table. The G comfort parameters is one of the best features in the DSC controller. It gives the card the comfort that you want without sacrificing performance on the track or for spirited driving. The default rate is the minimum percentage command within each suspension mode. In this particular case, it shows 6.0. DSC always starts at the minimum value in each mode. In this case here, the example is 6%. As the driving load increases, which the primary load is G-Force, it will increase from the 6% minimum value to counter the relative amount of G-Force. So the harder you drive, the more G-Force is generated the stiffer the suspension will become in real time, all the way up to 100% when the G-Force meets or exceeds 1G. Beyond 1G, the peak value holds. The default rate is one of our quote-unquote go-to settings. If you want a particular mode to be softer or stiffer before any G-Force occurs, such as when you're just cruising on a highway, you would either increase or decrease the default rate percentage. For most vehicles, a default rate change of 5% is a noticeable difference. Obviously, you cannot go below 1%. And as far as the max value for the default rate goes, I would recommend that you don't go over 30. Because once you go over 30, that doesn't leave you a full range to work with for the active commands as the G-Force and load increases. Next to the default rate is offset. This is important. Some calibration files for some vehicles will have a value of 100 for the offset, while another vehicle might be 50 or 30. It is important to note what the offset is before making any changes. You want to keep the same offset value when you make changes. Bear in mind, this DSC tuner software is the engineer's version. The offset value is an internal engineering feature that's built in, so we recommend not changing the offset value. Next to offset is sensitivity and G rate max. These two values can be changed to customize the way the car feels to the driver's preference. Sensitivity and G rate max are the two settings that triggers the switch between G comfort parameters to the main G table. Think of it as switching between the comfort zone and the high performance zone. Having the comfort zone and the high performance zone triggered by G force, which is a function of the driver's input, this is actively controlling the car's suspension to the driver's mood. This feature gives you the performance that you want and the comfort that you want so there's no compromise. What the sensitivity value is, in this case, is a 20. This represents when in the G comfort parameter, how much rate of change it takes to trigger out of the G comfort parameter, which is the default value, to the higher values in the main G table. In this particular example, the default rate is 6%. And as you start in the G table, it is 50. So to go from 6% to 50, the G force or the rate of change in the G force, such as when you're driving the vehicle in a slalom or if you're making a sudden lane change, the rate of change will have to exceed a certain threshold and the threshold is represented in this value in sensitivity. 
the lower the numeric value, the more sensitive it is. So if you want the suspension to be stiffer, to less movement from the driver, you would then decrease the sensitivity value. Typically, by decreasing it by a value of five is a noticeable difference. This is a number that you can play with to get to your personal preference. G-rate max. Now, beyond the sensitivity, uh, another factor that can trigger out of the G comfort into the main G table is the amount of G force. In this case, it is at 2.5, which represents 0.25 G. So when the car exceeds 0.25 G, regardless of rate of change, so therefore regardless of the sensitivity value, it will automatically jump out of the G comfort parameter into the main G table. So you can set this G rate max to your personal liking. You can increase it by holding the uh, default rate longer, or you can set it to a lower value by triggering out of the default rate and into the main G table sooner. There are rare exceptions where some drivers do not prefer to have the G comfort parameter at all. So they want just the main G table. So in which case you can turn off the G comfort parameter by entering zero in the G rate max box. So this is it for the G table, as I promised. There's a lot of stuff here going on, but I simplified it to only changing the default rate, sensitivity, and G rate max. I'm now gonna do a demonstration on changing the default rate. So what I'm gonna do is uh, up this from six to 10. This is just an example. Now, any change that is made you have to hit update in order for the change to tick. So we have put the default rate from 6 to 10. Update. And now we want to save this change. So I will go to file. Save as. I'm going to name this change as today's date, which is 050521. save as and once this is saved i'm going to demonstrate how to write this single page to your dsc without writing the entire file there's no need to write an entire file if you only change one setting in one page so how to do this is in each page there is a write button so all you have to do is connect to your DSC, reset board, write, reset board after the writing is completed, and that's it. So there's no need to write the entire file just for one change. This same procedure for making a change and writing it to your DSC applies to all other settings in the DSC Tuner software. The next performance table is brake. This vertical scale represents brake line pressure. When you push on the brake pedal, brake line pressure is generated. And the brake line pressure to DSC command to each shock is shown here in these four boxes. The harder you push on the brake, the more brake line pressure is generated the stiffer the commands become to each shock. By adding front damping force to keep the nose of the car from diving while adding damping force to the rear to keep the back of the car from lifting, this optimizes braking stability and grip. This is an active anti-dive feature offered by DSC to how hard you're pushing on the brake. This is a total game changer. As far as tuning is concerned, the brake pressure value is an additive value to G-force. 
as an example situation, if the car is subjected to a certain amount of G-force, which calls for, say, 30% damping command, and you happen to apply 15 bar of brake pressure, so this will add 22% to that 30 that already exists in the front. So that will give you a total of about 50% damping force in the front. The brake line pressure command actually kicks in before the vertical G-force from braking because there's a split second in time from the time you hit the brake pedal till the caliper and the pads grab the rotor till the tire actually bites to generate G-force. This feature blends perfectly with the G-force commands to make for a seamless active driving experience. In our standard calibration files, we have these brake table settings tuned very well. So typically you would not want to change these. I would also like to point out that with the additive value, you cannot expect greater than 100% output from each shock. 100% is the maximum output. So let's say you have 60 plus 60, which equals 120. The maximum output is still at 100. But what this does is it will achieve 100 sooner. For anyone who has experience with shock tuning, as you know, it's all about timing. So being able to achieve the max value sooner is a big advantage. While we're on the topic of timing, I have another great feature to show you. The threshold box. We have DK, pressure, and speed. What this does is once you achieve the maximum braking pressure value, it will hold the peak value command for this amount of time in milliseconds. 1,000 stands for 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. Pressure, in order for this threshold feature to work, the brake pressure must exceed 30. So if you're pushing the brake pedal lightly in a parking lot, this feature is not gonna be activated. So it has to be over 30 bar, but however, you can adjust these parameters. Speed, it must be over five miles per an hour for the threshold feature to kick in. Obviously, we don't need threshold feature to kick in at under five miles per an hour. Again, you can adjust these settings. Make sure once you make a change, you hit update and save. Giving you an example of how the threshold feature comes into a practical application. Say you're at a racetrack and you're breaking into a corner. Once you come off the brake, the threshold feature holds the maximum damping value for, in this case, a thousand milliseconds. So by holding this peak value, it keeps the nose of the car down enough to turn in better. This is like a mini trail braking. The next performance table is the Excel table. It stands for acceleration. Originally, when we built this table, we had in mind that should a user wants to trigger the shock command with throttle percentage, they can enter values. Over the years, we have found it to be better to use G-Force and for vehicles equipped with ride height sensors to use the ride height sensor data along with G-Force to manage rolling acceleration. For standing acceleration, such as at a drag strip or autocross with standing starts, we have our DSC launch control function that's available for most applications. With DSC launch control, you can set the parameters for start of the launch and at the end of the launch. The timer in the threshold box is used to set the duration of the launch control. TPS rate is for triggering the launch control. It says 35 here, so therefore the throttle must exceed 35% in order to activate launch control. Below it is the speed. The launch control can only be activated at under 60 miles per an hour because it is intended for standing launches. 
we have a separate video completely devoted to the DSC launch control, so please feel free to check that out. The next performance table is the speed table. Purpose of the speed table is to add damping force to increasing speeds to manage road forces as well as road imperfections. To give you an example here, driving over a dip at 60 miles per hour is different than driving over the same dip at 120 miles per hour. Driving over that same dip at double the vehicle speed will require more damping force to keep the vehicle stable. The speed table can also be used for aerodynamics management. If you have a wing that becomes highly effective past X miles per an hour, you can increase the command values when this vehicle speed is met. The speed table is an additive value. The speed G limit threshold box here controls how this additive value blends with the main G table values. When the vehicle exceeds 0.3 G, the main G table value adds in. If you want a more sporty feel at higher speeds, you can either increase the command value targeting the speed that you want, or you can reduce the threshold value so that the G-force value kicks in sooner, making the car feel more sporty by making it more stiff. For the speed G limit threshold, a change of 0.1 makes a noticeable difference. A very cool exercise that you can do is if your car is equipped with an aftermarket data logging device or some of the newer cars even have a G-force meter built into the instrument cluster, you can drive around, look at the G-force numbers and have an idea of at what amount of G-force you want more stiffness. Another change that you can make is you can make the front and the rear have different command values. So all you have to do is enter the value that you want, update, save as, and rename the file. Once you have rename and save the file, you can either write this one single page to your DSC, or you have the option to write the entire file. The next table over to the right is steering. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on the steering table because for most plug and play applications, all the values are at zero across the scale. The original intention of this table is to add damping commands to steering wheel angle when you're turning the steering wheel to the left or to the right at various different degrees. We don't use this function on most applications because this function does what the sway bars on the car already do. So if your car has sway bars, then this function is redundant. There are only two exceptions for this table. The first exception is if you're using a DSC standalone system on a custom build car, such as a resto mod that does not have sway bars. And the second exception is for the General Motors cars. I'm gonna switch vehicles here. The C7 Corvettes and the Camaros does not have the steering table. As you can see here, once we switch vehicles to the General Motors, instead of steering, it says PTM, which stands for Performance Traction Management. For these specific vehicles, we have pre-embedded values to be compatible with the PTM system. Next, we have shock calibration. This is a very interesting table. All through this video, we talked about percentages. The shocks do not understand percentages like we human users do. The shocks react only to electrical current expressed in milliamps. The shock calibration table 
is the translation between percentage and milliamps. Our tuning strategy is to use the full range of the shock from full soft to full stiff. I'm now going to do a demonstration on how to modify the shock calibration table to focus on the stiffer portion of the range. Please note that this demonstration is for the use of the software. It is not specific to a certain vehicle. Different vehicles do have different milliamp values for their shocks. We will go over the differences later on in this video. For this demonstration, first we find out what the output is at 0%, which is 1500 milliamps. And at 100%, it is at 600 milliamps. We're now going to clear all. This is now completely cleared. We can enter any value that we want. We will keep the 100% at 600 milliamps. Enter. Jumping across over here to 0%, we were at 1500 milliamps, but I want 1000. Update. And you have the option to tune each shock individually, front, rear, left, right. With the max and the min value filled out, I will now use the fill empty function. This will fill the gap between max and min in a linear fashion. I'm now repeating the same for the rear shocks except I have purposely entered different values. So 0% 1800, 100% at 500, fill empty. This is filling it out in a linear way. I deviated the rear values on purpose, just so you can see the different shade and color. You can visualize what the shocks behavior is in the range just by the way that the colors look the lighter the color the stiffer it is i have now effectively revalved this shock electronically so this is awesome once you have made this change update you have to update in order for this change to hold and then save or save as so now you have the file you can create different shock calibration profiles for the different suspension modes on the car. This way, you can switch modes on the fly and test the different shock calibrations and get immediate results. For the advanced suspension tuners, the values enter across the scale can be linear, progressive, or digressive, or combination of across the scale and you can custom tune each shock individually, front, rear, left, right. The possibilities are endless. This is totally a dream come true for suspension tuners. We will now go over the different types of shocks. The electrical current in milliamps react differently in the different types of shocks. Currently, there are three types of electronic shocks supported by DSC. The first type is electromagnetic valve shock. This type of shock is found on the Porsche 997 and 991 series cars, as well as the Nissan R35 GTR. The electronic valve opens and closes to varying positions to electrical current, much like a fuel injector. On the Porsches and Nissan GTRs, the valve is normally closed meaning without electrical current, the valve is in closed position, making the shock full stiff. For this type of shock, higher milliamp value makes the shock softer. Lower milliamp value makes the shock stiffer. The second type of shock is magnetic fluid shock, found on Ford and GM cars, such as Mustang GT500, GT350, the R variants, Mustang GT, EcoBoost, and GM cars such as the C7 Corvette, 
including all the different models from Stingray to ZL6 to ZR1 and the Gen 6 Camaros, including SS. This type of shock is filled with oil containing magnetic particles. With no electrical current applied to the shock, the shock is full soft. When the electrical current is applied, the magnetic particles align to create resistance, making the shock stiffer. For this type of shock, higher milliamp value makes the shock stiffer. Lower milliamp values makes the shock softer, which is completely opposite to the electromagnetic valve shock with normally closed valve. The third type of shock is a stepper valve shock found on the Ford Focus RS and the Dodge Gen 5 Viper. As the name implies, stepper valve opens and closes to multiple fixed positions, as opposed to infinitely varying positions. Each fixed position produces its own damping curve. Each position can be held or staged by electrical current to change the handling characteristics of the car. A stepper valve can either be normally closed or normally open. Since the different type of shocks behave differently to electrical current, this is the reason why we have different shock calibration values for different vehicles. We also have different shock calibration for popular aftermarket coilovers and for our own line of DSC Sport ultra high performance coilovers. As a reminder, the help section applies to this page as well as any other pages by opening the help dialog. It will give you an explanation of this page. The next performance table is velocity. This is referring to the suspension's travel velocity, as in how fast the wheel is moving up and down. Suspension travel velocity is measured by the factory ride height sensors equipped on the vehicle. DSC velocity tuning is available for nearly all of our vehicle types. There are only three exceptions. They are Porsche 997, Nissan R35 GTR, and Ford Focus RS. These three vehicle types do not come from the factory with ride height sensors at each corner. All other DSC applications do. In velocity tuning, we have compression and rebound. Compression is the upward motion which compresses the shock, and rebound is the downward motion which the shock is extending. For those of you who have shock tuning experience, you will recognize these labels. We have low speed, medium speed, and high speed for both compression and rebound. For our purpose, low speed is travel between zero to two inches per second. Medium speed is between two to four inches per second. Anything above four is considered high speed. As an example, driving on a long sweeper that slowly compresses the suspension is considered low speed. Driving over a big bump that compresses the suspension very quickly, that's considered high speed. For those of you who have experienced tuning mechanical shocks by turning the compression and rebound dials, the same terminology still applies here in the DSC velocity function. Where the difference is, is when you're tuning the mechanical shocks by turning those dials, you're setting the absolute value for the shocks. Whereas in the DSC velocity function, this is an offset. This offset can be a plus or minus value. Another way to think of this is using G-force as a foundation value. Velocity can offset the foundation value by plus or minus, such as if you are driving at 1G loaded up in a corner and it happens to be a bumpy corner. So the ride height sensor will pick up the bump in velocity as high speed, and it will take out some of the damping, making the car a lot smoother, a lot more stable going through that bumpy corner. 
DSC velocity function allows you to target specific velocity travel events without changing the absolute value from g-force. This is done by entering an offset value that you want at the desire cell. Here is an example for making a change. By selecting this cell here, which is low speed compression, right rear, it is at negative five offset. So what this does is on acceleration, it will soften the absolute by 5%, giving the car better grip in the rear for acceleration. Should you want more than 5%, we can do a minus 7.5 update, and then we can save it. Having DSC velocity tuning is having multi-dimensional tuning for your suspension. Another game changer from DSC. Below the main velocity table is the velocity table for LNC, launch control. So here you can set the low speed, medium speed, high speed compression and rebound for the front and the rear independently for when DSC launch control is activated. Travel stops. This is a very advanced function that is designed for use by professional chassis tuners. This is an electronic bump stop that is set by the DSC software to limit the distance of which a shock can travel both upward and downward. The distance is measured in millimeters and you can also set how hard or how soft the nose of the stop is by setting the electrical current in milliamps. In order to use travel stops, the car's ride height sensors must be zero to the static ride height. Again, travel stops is a very advanced feature designed for use by professionals. For all other users not using travel stops, these values must be at zero. The last table we have is settings. Settings displays the different modes for the vehicle selected. Some vehicles have two suspension modes, some have three, some even have five. So for this particular vehicle, there are only two, normal and sport mode for the suspension. Below it is driveline. This is specific to the Porsche vehicles because the DSC for the Porsche vehicles can also control the dynamic engine mounts. As you select the different modes, you can see the color change on the outside of the frame. This indicates to the user which mode they are working with, regardless of what table they're in. The next feature in this table is that you can write different modes to your DSC. Let's say you like the sport mode, and you want to make the sport mode the normal mode in your DSC, so you would select sport here, and you would select write to, which is writing to the DSC, normal. One column over, we have the travel sensors. So this is for cars equipped with factory ride height sensors. You can zero each one independently for nearly all users it is the most convenient to just use the zero travel which does all four simultaneously we have a separate video on zeroing the ride height sensors to do this you would need the car's ignition to be on so that the sensors are powered up and your pc connected to the dsc which is installed in the car the last column over here this is for advanced users for using the travel stops. For everyone else who is not using the travel stops, this should just be left at zero. We have gone over a lot of information in this video. Here's a brief summary. The DSC tuner software is a very powerful tool with many tuning parameters, infinitely wide tuning capabilities, and performance features that are total game changers. The DSC Tuner software version 1.9.3 is not a watered-down software. It is an engineer's version. 
As such, in order to take advantage of all of the tuning parameters, it is a prerequisite to have knowledge on general suspension tuning, G-force, and vehicle weight transfer. However, I will highlight three easy and very effective settings for enthusiast level users to take advantage of to customize the suspension feel to their personal preference. The first setting, default rate. It is located in the lower portion of the G-Force table. This is the easiest and most effective way to make the suspension softer or stiffer for each mode. The recommended range is from 1% to 30%. A change of 5% is a noticeable difference. The second setting is Sensitivity and G-Rate Max, also located in the lower portion of the G-Force page. Even though these are two separate values to fill in, I consider them as one setting because they correlate closely to manage when a big dose of stiffness blends into the changing G-Force. By lowering the Sensitivity and or the G-Rate Max by a value of 5, it is a noticeable difference. Try this in increments of five. The third setting is shock calibration. The dynamic operating range of each shock can be made wider or narrower. Narrowing of the dynamic operating range can favor the softer portion, the stiffer portion, or the middle portion of the shock's total capability. Since this can be done for individual shock, you can focus on either front or rear so you choose to change only one end of the car. Or you can even change one side of the car if you're tuning for a NASCAR type oval track. As we're coming to a close of this video, I would like to reiterate that every new DSC controller from us comes already programmed for the vehicle it was ordered for. It is not necessary to tune your DSC controller. Tuning your DSC controller is an option and it can be very satisfying. We hope you enjoyed this video and gained some information from it. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram. Thanks for watching.